Andrew, if you're spreading misinformation, I will call you out. I will criticize you and I will make sure the whole world knows about it. So you better watch out. And then this guy shits on it. You. Hey, Dr. Yad here. I'm a medical doctor, but also a calisthenics athlete for over 14 years. And I've done some cool calisthenic skills, you know, here and this and that. And today we're reacting to videos that you guys send me on Instagram on people teaching calisthenics on social media. We're going to see if it's good information or if they're spreading misinformation. So let's start with the first one. The first one by Sheikh Tamir. My biceps from planch push-ups and while most people take months to recover, I did it in just two weeks. Most people think they should start immediately with physiotherapy, but they are wrong. Instead, I took few days of total rest from any movement that I knew could trigger the area and cause pain. At the same time, I adjusted my nutrition accordingly and increased my carbs intake. And when my body felt ready, I started with activations in full planch with low volume low frequency. I made a full video breaking down everything I did. Just comment bicep and I will send you the video. Okay, so a very interesting video, but the very first critique that I have is we don't know what kind of injury he had. He just mentions biceps injury. Could be anything. You know, it could be a proximal tear, could be a distal tear, could be a partial tear, could be a tendinopathy, could just be a strain, could be anything. So we don't know what we're really talking about. He says he recovered within two weeks, which, you know, sounds like it's nothing too serious. What I do want to focus on is his approach to recovery. There's some really good things in there, but also some things that I would do differently. So I did a podcast with Professor Keith Barr. He is a professor who knows a lot about tendon and muscle injuries. And he would actually say, don't immobilize after an injury like this one or any injury where there isn't surgery required. Instead, you want to immediately start loading the tendon by doing very, very light loads. So for example, let's say I have a biceps pain like he does. Instead of like doing nothing, you want to do isometric contraction for like 30 seconds and you want to have load, a light load going through the tendon. It works anti-inflammatory and it actually strengthens the injured part and helps it get stronger. If you immobilize, they, they, they did a study and they saw after three days of immobilizing, you already have a 10 to 15% decrease of collagen. If you want to watch that podcast, check it out. It's somewhere on the screen. It's super life-changing. You will learn a lot about injuries. The second thing this man mentions is his nutrition. He does basically more carbs. So I'm assuming he's also in a caloric surplus, which is a good idea, but I would actually focus on eating more protein. And in this case, collagen plus vitamin C. If you want to learn more about that, again, watch the podcast. So overall, not a bad video, but you know, I have some critique points. Oh, this next one is Andrew Strong, who's actually a friend of mine, but I do want to say, Andrew, if you're spreading misinformation, I will call you out. I will criticize you and I will make sure the whole world knows about it. So you better watch out. Let's watch this video and let's see if he's speaking the truth. So everyone talk about protraction, shoulder depression, but they skip one very important point. It's shoulder external rotation. Hmm. Yes. That small movement can help you to activate your legs more, to engage your chest more. Mm. And as a result, that will improve your protraction because the protraction is not only about your serratus interior, it's also about your chest muscle as well. And once you're ready to do the planche, shoulders, down, external rotation, full protraction, that's help you Andy. to activate muscle way more and get your planche to the next level. Andri, this is a great video. This is amazing. So protraction and keeping a hollow body position in planche is a very complex topic. It's something I actually want to dedicate a whole video on. I, as someone who's been doing calisthenics for so long as I have, am still having trouble keeping a good protracted body position. And it's because there's a lot of mechanics that goes into it. Now, the thing he mentions is the external rotation. And it's a little bit crazy because the lats that he mentions in your packs, they're not responsible for externally rotating. In fact, they're responsible for internally rotating. But you can actually touch your lats and make that movement and you'll notice they will still contract. And the reason for that is when you're making this movement, you're basically also doing a little bit of shoulder extension and you're doing shoulder adduction, which means bringing your elbows 
towards your body. And if you do that, those two movements actually activate both your lats and your pecs to the max level. So just externally rotating, even though you're just externally rotating, it's almost always in a planche position, accompanied by both adduction and shoulder extension, which really helps having a lot more tension in your uh, upper body, which is super important for planche. He actually taught me this in real life, and it has improved my planche by a lot, but I do teach it a little bit different than Andrew does, and I will make a whole video on this, but the way he teaches it is also really good. So Andrew, great video, but watch out, watch out. Hey, I want to talk about Movement Made, a brand that I use daily. And you saw it in the montage, I actually do. They make super cool stuff like these P-Bars. They are made from sustainable wood, high quality. They got fat handles, which is great for your wrist and forearms. Then they have these resistant bands, 100% natural rubber, so it won't ever snap. You have these rings, super smart. They're half the size, but full functionality, easy to pack. You have these straps, many of them, and it will take a whole video to explain why these are super awesome. So if you wanna support me and you wanna support Movement Made, use my code and let's go back to the video. All right, next video by Jonah Kasenix. He's 15 years old and he's doing things that I will never be able to do on both sides. This is obviously not a tutorial. It's just a flex on us mortals. Jonah. You. Let's move on. Let's move on secret to pulling higher and harder during your pull-ups and it is called the silent kip and whoa okay so i know this guy i've seen him in my feed he, he actually follows me and i follow him and we spoke about some grip stuff but the silent kip i think he's about to expose me because i i kind of do a silent kip so i'm wondering if he's going to cover this secret, but let's see what he says. Most of you know what a traditional kip looks like. That's when we use our legs and our knees to drive momentum upwards so we can pull higher. A silent kip uses a lot of the same strength principles as a traditional kip. You just can't see it and that's why it's silent. The first step is to get into an active dead hang. And all that means is pulling your scapula down so your arms stay straight and your body comes upwards. That Yeah, so in an active dead hang, you're basically depressing depressing your scapula. That's your starting position. Another key point here is to keep your core disengaged. Here's an example of your core being engaged. Your legs slightly come upwards. And this is what it looks like when your core is disengaged. Your legs kind of hang backwards. Huh. So active dead hang and core disengaged. That's okay. our starting position. All I want you to do is drop out of the active dead hang. Oh. Think of like a short rubber band. Once you drop out of that dead hang and you feel like you're fully extended, you're going to rebound to generate as much power as possible. At the same time, you're going to contract your core without lifting your legs. Okay, so he's going on a completely different route than I thought he would. He's explaining how to utilize stretch reflex and get a more explosive start in your pull-ups. So what stretch reflex basically is, is your muscles can elongate right before you contract them again. So they become long and then they become shorter again. And the reason why that can help you to be more explosive, it's, it's like an elastic band. And I'm sure he's gonna explain it in a bit, but basically when you extend it, there's a lot of potential energy, potential elastic energy being put into your muscles. And then once you go the other direction, shortening, you can use that momentum to go up even faster. Uh, but I expected him to talk about something else, which I will keep a secret for now. This is the silent kip. It's the same principle when you load a rubber band. The more See? you pull on it, the more explosive power it's going to generate. Yeah. You can do the same thing when dropping out of that active dead hang. I suggest you practice one rep at a time, pulling as high and as powerful as possible. Once you get used to how it feels to do this on the bar consecutively and pretending to be a rubber band while hanging on the bar, you will instantly become more explosive and I hope this helps. That's a really good video. It 
really will help a lot of people to get a more explosive start in their pull-ups. I actually learned that in the final rep competitions, which is a street lifting organization organizing like the world competitions, they don't allow any stretch reflex when you're doing your pull-ups, which is for a lot of people just entering that competition super hard because it's so baked into us to do this thing that he's talking about. Yeah, just a little fun fact. Good video. One arm pull up, the best exercise is to hold this for 10 seconds. And if you can hold this for 10 seconds, you can do one arm pull up. Wait, 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 wait. That's it? That's all I have to do? This is the best tutorial on one arm pull-ups? Listen, I don't like shitting on people. I really don't. I want to be a positive force, right? But when I see things like this, it's just, just for context. I've been working on a one arm pull-up tutorial for many months. I've been thinking, writing, programming, you know? I've been, I've been looking at the anatomy of the one arm pull-up, thinking of the safest way to teach this movement. And then this guy, shits on it and he says all you got to do he's not british but all you gotta do is get to this position water for 10 seconds and then you're done you just want to pull up <sighs> okay calm down obviously this is not true even if you can hold for 10 seconds and i, I don't know he's not teaching you how to get to that 10 seconds you won't be able to do one arm pull up. There's so much more to it. And uh, before I get too angry, let's end this video. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. We reacted to a bunch of videos you guys sent. If you want me to react to more stuff and if you like this series, please comment below, subscribe, like, do the whole thing. Please do the whole thing. Please. Okay, bye.